Today we're diving into Vitalik Buterin's master plan to make Ethereum great again. Ethereum is on a mission to change the way power is held and who gets to hold it. Now Vitalik's six part roadmap could make Ethereum a faster, more secure and truly decentralized blockchain, but can these changes actually deliver on the hype? Vitalik's vision might change everything we know about Ethereum as it is. And I'm gonna to try to break it down simply so us regular humans can understand it. Because if this plan works, it could have a real impact on the way this space moves forward. So let's start with the merge. If you don't know, the merge is probably the biggest thing that's happened to Ethereum so far. It was a switch from proof of work to proof of stake where people put up their Ethereum to secure the network. Now, there are lots of arguments as to which method is better, proof of work or proof of stake, but I'm trying to keep it neutral here and I'll just give you some pros and cons. First of all, one of the major benefits of proof of stake is that anyone can get involved from anywhere and there is no physical target risk. A prime example is the huge mining farms that we see for Bitcoin. These are direct targets and a huge cause for concern in terms of centralization. In proof of stake, it's also easier to target and shut down bad actors as they get their stake slashed by the community, making it easier for the chain to adapt and move away from anything malicious. But let's not ignore the downsides. It could definitely go the other way and end up being an incredibly centralized chain. But this is where Vitalik's roadmap should help avoid that situation. Proof of stake is often seen as making the rich richer because you need to own Ethereum to earn more Ethereum. Lowering the amount of Ethereum required to stake makes it more accessible, but does it really make it fair for everyone? It's still harder for smaller participants to have the same influence as those with lots of Ethereum. Some critics argue that proof of work, despite its energy use, offers a fairer system because it doesn't rely on having a large amount of Ethereum. On the flip side, mining is dominated by ASICs now, and they aren't exactly cheap. Others suggest alternatives like delegated proof of stake or proof of space as potential solutions that might better balance fairness and efficiency. Another important point is single slot finality. Vitalik aims for single slot finality, which would finalize transactions in a single slot, improving speed and making the network more responsive. Additionally, Vitalik envisions lowering staking requirements even further to make staking accessible to more participants. So while the merge has some benefits, we still need to remind ourselves that decentralization must not be neglected. And Vitalik's vision is about making security fair and open, but there's still debate about whether proof of stake can ever truly be as decentralized as proof of work was meant to be. Now let's move on to part two of his vision the surge. This phase is all about making Ethereum bigger and better. If you've used Ethereum during busy times, you know how bad it can get. High gas fees, slow transactions, it can be pretty frustrating and prices a lot of smaller users out. Vitalik wants to solve this by fixing the scalability trilemma, which is a challenge of balancing speed, decentralization, and security. It's a tough problem, but no one said changing the world would be easy, and the size of Ethereum means it's not a simple task. Will these solutions work the way that we hope? Well, Vitalik talks about data availability sampling, or DAS, which helps ensure data is available without everyone needing to store all of it. Sounds good, right? But it also adds complexity. What happens if some of the data isn't available when it's needed? These are questions that need answering, especially when we rely on new and less tested technologies. Vitalik also emphasizes data compression to reduce each block's data footprint, making storage more efficient. He aims to increase Ethereum's transactions per second, or TPS, to potentially over 100,000, especially by relying on rollups as a primary scalability solution. Then we have layer two solutions like rollups. Rollups take transactions off the main chain, compress them, and then put the important parts back on the main chain, like making a zip file to save space and speed things up. 
The hope is that this will make Ethereum able to handle thousands of transactions per second. But again, rollups rely on trust. Will the rollup providers always act honestly? They're supposed to use the security of Ethereum as the backbone, but we're putting a lot of faith in new systems and there are risks involved. Now on to part three, the scourge. This part is about stopping centralization. One of the biggest dangers to any decentralized network is centralization. In proof of stake, we have to be careful that a few big players don't end up controlling everything. Vitalik is worried about centralization in block building. If just a few entities control block production, they could control the network, which is the opposite of what we want. Right now, a handful of Bitcoin mining pools are responsible for the majority of block production. The solution Vitalik proposes is to split up block building roles. This could help prevent centralization, but it's also a complicated system. Will it be easy for regular users to understand and participate in this kind of network? And what if the incentives don't work as planned? We've seen well-intentioned ideas have unintended consequences in the past. So caution, of course, is warranted. Vitalik is also interested in creating decentralized block building marketplaces to help prevent centralization and maintain Ethereum's decentralized nature. Another key aspect of the scourge is MEV, which is minor extractable value. It's the ability for miners or validators to extract value by manipulating transactions within blocks. Vitalik's plan includes mitigating MEV to ensure fairer and more predictable outcomes for users. And then there's staking economics. Vitalik plans to put in place diminishing returns for large stakes so that big players don't dominate the network. But will this be fair enough to stop the wealthiest participants from having too much power? If not, they could run multiple validators to get around this. Even with these measures, proof of stake could still favor those with deep pockets. There's a lot of work to do to ensure Ethereum stays truly decentralized, and that's going to require constant community involvement and vigilance. Next, part four, The Verge. This phase is about making Ethereum more efficient. Imagine if you could run an Ethereum node without needing tons of storage. That's the goal, to make nodes light and easy to use. Now, one way to do this is with Verkle trees, which help nodes verify what's happening without storing all the data. This could make it easier for more people to run nodes, but it's also a new technology. What if there are problems with implementation? New tech can have bugs and setbacks, and we need to be cautious. Another important aspect is stateless clients. Stateless clients enabled by Verkle trees will reduce the need for nodes to store all historical state data, making Ethereum more efficient for smaller devices. Starks and Snarks are another part of this. They let you prove something is true without showing all the details, which makes verification faster and more secure. They also contribute to enhanced scalability and privacy, crucial for users valuing cryptographic privacy. But again, there is a learning curve here. And as end users, we don't need to know all the technical details, just that we can trust the technology and the developers behind it. The goal of The Verge is to make Ethereum nodes accessible to everyone. Imagine running a node on your smartphone or even a smart watch. If this goal is achieved, it could be huge for decentralization and making the network unstoppable. The fifth part of his vision is the purge. Over time, Ethereum has gotten bulky, too much historical data, random features added on, and it's slowing development down. The purge is about making Ethereum lighter, more efficient, which also means less chance of failures. One way to achieve this is with history expiry, where active nodes can forget old data that isn't needed anymore. This makes the network more manageable, while archive nodes store old data so it's still accessible if needed. Other blockchains like Bitcoin keep a full ledger of all transactions, which can be cumbersome, but ensures data is always accessible. Streamlining is good, but we need to make sure that we're not sacrificing anything critical. Another feature of the purge is state expiry, which aims to allow nodes to discard old inactive accounts or contracts. 
further reducing data load and improving node accessibility. There's also feature cleanup, which is like pruning a tree by removing unused or old code that's bloating the network. Finally, we have the splurge. This part is about making Ethereum even better for regular users. One of the big upgrades here is account abstraction. If you've ever lost your private key, you know how scary that can be. With account abstraction, there are new ways to recover accounts like social recovery, where trusted friends or family can help you get back in. It sounds great, but there are risks and benefits. Adding more people to the recovery process can create security holes, but if you trust everyone, it can make it stronger. EIP 4337 is another part of the splurge, which aims to add features without changing the core protocol, like gasless transactions. This makes Ethereum easier for beginners, but adds more complexity without removing old features. EIP 4337 also introduces improvements like account abstraction and fee flexibility, simplifying onboarding for new users. The splurge also includes other potential upgrades to make Ethereum more developer friendly, like refining transaction formats and improving smart contract language features, making the network more versatile for developers. Vitalik wants Ethereum to be simple enough for anyone to use. That's an admirable goal, but adding more features can sometimes make things more complicated. It's about finding the right balance between usability and complexity. So that's it, Ethereum's roadmap as written by Vitalik, simplified into a nutshell. From scalability and decentralization to making things easier for everyone, there's a lot to be excited about, but we also have to be realistic. Each of these phases has its own set of challenges and risks. And remember, this isn't just about technology, it's about creating a system that gives power back to the people challenges traditional finance and gives us more control over our lives in the digital world. It's an ambitious vision, but it's going to take a lot of work, caution, and critical thinking to get there. Crypto was built to disrupt, not conform. If you want to learn more, check out our educational platform at learningcrypto.com and take your financial freedom into your own hands.